everywhere. And so look how we're coming out for, for the Dreamcast that really pushed the envelope on how many polygons were in a fighter. Well, Jack Ryan Radio, other games that use cell shading, but I think Jack Ryan Radio was the one, the first, like, really notable game to use a cell shaded graphics. The NFL 2K series was the first video game where the players on the field that you were playing with, you'd look at their faces and they were the players. Donkey Kong Country, you know what, I think it was the like, first time I really saw like, a game that was practically 3D on the Super Nintendo. You think of that way, Donkey Kong Country, revolutionized way you saw graphics of a gaming system. So really, without some of these games on the list, I mean, game graphics would actually be relatively primitive, I think, because you know, those guys push the bar forward and they force their competitors really to make better graphics. Eco is a revolutionary game in its own right. This unique 3D adventure game for the PS2 has more style than the Fab Five on a screen at Macy. And go figure, it's number five on our list. Okay, Ico, I think that the way the graphics are put together in combination with the story and the gameplay, that's like perfect. That is like the, the most underrated game ever. I thought it was an absolutely gorgeous game. I kind of think it's almost like, you know, a beautiful piece of art. Beautifully expansive scenes. You know, you, you'd walk outside the castle and it just the scenes are absolutely breathtaking. The way they built the worlds and, and the environments, um, you know, you really felt like lost in this incredible, magical place. I mean, it was just wonderful. And the graphics kind of moving along with that, like the ghostly spirits moving out of the ground and seeping on this black shadow thing, and the world's huge and when you go outside and you know, it hurts your eyes, actually look at the screen for a second and it takes a second to adjust to how bright things are. Just it's just graphically amazing. It's just really, really well done. Not every game can be a fairy tale. You need an occasional dose of blood and gore to keep it interesting. Ninja Gaiden, hard-edged violence, features some of the most eye-popping graphics ever to grace the Xbox. If you don't think it deserves our number four spot, maybe you need glasses. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden is like the tightest graphically like the tightest game I've seen on Xbox so far. The frame rate is like perfect. It's like there's no choppiness at all. There could be like half a dozen guys on the screen fighting everything from like the water effects, the explosions. I think it's graphically the best game on Xbox. Graphically, they've got a lot of really cool effects that they're applying. It looks incredible. I mean, it's very exciting. It's just really slick. It just looks really slick to me. I, I like the way it's done. I kind of feel they've done a really good job of keeping the old school feel, the way the character moves with the graphics. Like Ninja Gaiden, you know, achieves this goal of trying to pay homage to an old thing while as well as building onto that concept. So the graphics on there just, you know, look really slick. There's no denying that Ninja Gaiden has great graphics. Yeah, it's
of the, the Zelda series and, and took it in a different direction. I thought it was pretty interesting, you know, I think, you know, everybody should have, have creative license to take their characters and remake them. They did a good thing going for such a risk of going, you know, completely cell shaded and they really captured it and, you know, they did some real subtle things like made uh, things blur in the distance where it was out of focus. I was pretty impressed with the tune shading that they were doing that. I think that was the first game that really successfully pulled that off. series. Those are very, very, very good games graphic-wise. Beautiful. Watching those games, it's like a movie. They're absolutely beautiful. So I'm surprised that any of those didn't make it on there. There's no racing games or sports games on there. Uh, Gran Turismo, the graphics are excellent. The, the controls are excellent. Everything about the game is great. It's just a good game. made the top 10 was the Soul Calibur 2. I mean, graphically, it's a really a breathtaking game. It's unbelievable. They did a really good job making it. There were a lot of good-looking games that didn't make the cut, but it just shows how high our voters set the bar. Now we're down to our final two. Halo is an incredible game all around. From intense dropship landings to heated firefights, obnoxious man-hating aliens, bungee shooter pulls no punches. But Halo isn't going to the top spot on the challenge. Metroid Prime shows that Master Chief isn't the only hero that looks good in armor. This first-person update of the classic side-scroller shows off the best of what the GameCube has to offer. So which ironclad hero will come out on top? Metroid Prime meets Halo in another filter face-off. established that success of the Xbox, because not only is the graphic game, obviously an incredible game, uh, being one of the first games on that Xbox to utilize the graphics of that platform, but also it's just an amazingly fun game to play. My favorite game ever, and they keep pushing back Halo 2. Whoever's doing that, stop. Halo is an awesome game. It just looks great. There's a lot of freedom, which is my big thing with video games, and uh, the graphics are awesome. Halo was one of the first games that really started to do uh, specular highlighting, like on the armor and that kind of stuff. That's the first time I really saw that done well on the Xbox. I think I have to go with Halo. Halo was a wonderful game. Um, I love the environments. Some of the mid mapping and the level of detail they provided within the game was incredible. And I gotta give props to the Bungie guys in Halo. like the vegetation, for example, in Metroid Prime, you might like step into water and you actually see the water molecules like bulging up on the on the mask, on Samus's mask. It's the little details like that that shooters generally don't do. I think Metroid Prime was probably one of the first games that did that. A lot of nice attention to detail with kind of the, the face shield of the character missing up and getting water droplets and a lot of, uh, you know, the environments were, were fairly nicely done as well. This is like a Halo, a devout Halo fan. I gotta give it to Metroid Prime in terms of graphics. If you're comparing things like gameplay and things like that, then Halo would be way above because of the multiplayer aspects of the weapons. But just graphics, Metroid Prime's gotta be. Samus 